all these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king and there they were with David three days eating and drinking for their brethren had prepared for them moreover they that were nigh them even unto Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali brought bread on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen and meat meal cakes of figs and bunches of raisins and wine and oil and oxen and sheep abundantly but there was joy in Israel As we continue to analyze the testaments of our fathers, I pray that every Israelite that come across these testaments are being blessed by our father's final words to their children. I pray that the Most High will show Israelites and strangers worldwide the value in the lost books. Israelites, do not let the workers of iniquity that run the beast system with the prince of this world tell you which of the Apocrypha books to explore and read. The workers of iniquity do not serve the Most High, nor do they have your best interests at heart. The scripture said everyone must work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Israelites, Listen to the word of the Most High and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. When you allow the workers of iniquity and the beast system dictate which books you should read, how are you working out your own salvation? You're allowing your adversaries to validate the word of the Most High. The scripture said the people who run this world, the principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places, along with the beast religion, do not know the Most High, nor do they serve the Most High. The scripture said the world cannot receive the Most High Spirit. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Israelites, did you hear the scriptures? They do not know the Most High. Therefore, the workers of iniquity are not qualified to tell you what is scriptural and what is not scriptural. Enoch has written hundreds of books. In the book of Enoch, Enoch prophesied that the workers of iniquity will pollute the scriptures. They will go as far as to write books that are contrary to the word of the Most High to cause confusion. The workers of iniquity want to deceive the remnant and glorify their idol gods in the scriptures. Enoch said when they start to write the truth of the word of the Most High, the remnant that will receive salvation will begin to read the truth and be blessed. And now, my son Methuselah, all these things I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee, and I have revealed to thee everything and given thee books concerning all these. So preserve, my son Methuselah, the books from thy father's hand, and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world. I have given wisdom to thee and to thy children, and thy children that shall be to thee, that they may give it to their children for generations. This wisdom, namely, that passeth their thought. And now I know this mystery, that sinners will alter and pervert the words of righteousness in many ways, and will speak wicked words and lie, and practice great deceits, and write books concerning their words. But when they write down truthfully all my words in their languages, and do not change or minish aught from my words, but write them all down truthfully, all that I first testified concerning them, then... I know another mystery, that books will be given to the righteous and the wise to become a cause of joy and uprightness and much wisdom. The Spirit of the Most High is not going to lead you to false doctrines and idolatry. The Satans, along with their human agents, don't want you to find the truth because the truth shall make you free. The ministers of Satan discourage you from reading books that can activate the Holy Spirit in you to maintain control over you. Some of our ancestors, 
listen to the wisdom of the workers of iniquity who oppress them in the beast religion and beast culture. In the process of following the heathens, they forgot who they are as a people. The very religion they pledged their faith to deceived them and led them on the broad road that leads to destruction. If the beast religion and the workers of iniquity that run this world with the prince of this world were truly serving the Most High and helping you, how come you forgot your tribe, land, and language? Everything about your culture and history was erased. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Did you hear what the scripture said? Through your own fault you shall discontinue from the inheritance the Most High gave to you. Remember, the word of the Most High said, My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. The Israelites and indigenous black people are destroyed because they perish for what they don't know. Now that the awakening is here, Israelites, I encourage you to spend time in the presence of the Most High. Read every book the Holy Spirit leads you to. Don't allow the workers of iniquity and the sons and daughters of Belial to deceive you. A lot of Israelites believe the Old Testament in the Bible is obsolete because the high-level workers of iniquity in Rome told you there's a new covenant. Some Israelites need to begin with the Old Testament before you start reading the Apocrypha books. I encourage everyone to read the so-called lost books under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the one that will tell you the truth and tell you the things to come. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. I notice in the awakening, many Israelites are waiting for religious leaders and workers of iniquity in the beast system to verify the truth being revealed in the awakening. Israelites, as long as you seek validation from the heathens that hate you, you will never become free. After all these years, you followed the heathens, you worship like the heathens, you act like the heathens, yet you still in bondage. Israelites, the wisdom of this world will lead you astray. The Most High said the wisdom of this world is foolishness. I'm not sure why many Israelites want the beast culture to validate the truth of the Most High's words. The Satans and their children are liars. They can't consume truth. When the truth of the Most High's words is being spoken, it cuts the workers of iniquity and every unclean foul spirits, causing them to flee from you. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Israelites, that is why the devils flee from you when you use the word of the Most High. They can't hear the truth of the word. The word of the Most High rebukes them. That is why the foundation of the beast system is based on lies. Israelites, you break the heads of your enemies when you speak the word. You don't need the heathens nor the satans to confirm what the Holy Spirit is revealing to you. Listen to the Most High and separate yourself from the foolish wisdom of this world. The heathens' educational system has failed you. They've suppressed history and they continue to alter the truth right before our eyes. The push for CRT is a living example of the heathens trying to suppress the truth. Remember, half-truth is still a lie. Israelites, don't allow the sons and daughters of Belial deceive you in the awakening. Too many are operating in a place of jealousy. Many are called, but only a few are chosen. Well, many are called, but few are chosen. Just because you were born male, it doesn't mean you were anointed to lead the people of the Most High. The leaders of our nation led our people into captivity through their wickedness and refusal to serve the Most High. Just because you were born female, it doesn't mean you can't be anointed. These are some of the tactics the Satans use to cause division. We are in the awakening. It's about time that Israelites understand how their adversaries attack. Many Israelites and indigenous black people lack maturity. 
the sins our fathers struggled with continue in this generation. The time has come for the people of the Most High to learn from the mistakes of their ancestors. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. The patriarchs to our nation made sure their final words to their children is available in every generation to save their lives. The fathers don't want their children to perish, therefore they made sure their descendants know the truth. The word of the Most High said narrow is the road that leads to life. A few will find that road. The population of the remnant is very small. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Zebulon is Leah's sixth son by Jacob. Leah had Zebulon after she exchanged the mandrakes Reuben found to be with Jacob. A mandrake is a fruit that helps with fertility. When Leah conceived her final son, she said, The Mosai has endued me with good dowry. Leah said, Now will my husband live with me? And she called his name Zebulon. And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulon. The testament of Issachar will give you further details about the mandrakes Leah gave to Rachel in exchange to be with her husband. Leah had to exchange the mandrakes to be with Jacob because at that point Rachel interfered with her marriage. Rachel prevented Jacob from being with Leah. When Zebulon was born, Leah said, Now my husband would dwell with me because I've borne him six sons. Leah also mentioned a dowry. Leah said, The Mosai has gifted me with good dowry. A dowry is a lump sum of money, cattle, or gifts a man pays to the family of the woman he wishes to marry. There are many African tribes today that observe this tradition. The imposters that have taken our identity in the beast culture do not observe this tradition. Somehow, they've convinced the world that they are the descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Zebulon means dwelling of honor. When Jacob gathered his sons to him to tell them what would happen in the future, Jacob said to Zebulon, He shall dwell at the haven of the sea. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Zebulon shall dwell at the haven of the sea. And he shall be for an haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. The tribe of Zebulon's dwelling is a place of honor. Zebulon did make the seas his haven. The Most High blessed Zebulon with the gift of knowledge about the sea. Zebulon said when he lived in Canaan, he was the first to make a boat and sail the sea. And when I was in the land of Canaan, by the sea coast, I made a catch of fish for Jacob my father. And when many are choked in the sea, I continued unhurt. I was the first to make a boat to sail upon the sea, for the Lord gave me understanding and wisdom therein. Zebulon would sail the sea to feed his family with his gains. In the summer, he would catch fish, and in the winter, he would tend his family's livestock with his brothers. Zebulon was a fisherman until the seed of Jacob came to Egypt. And I sailed therein along the shores catching fish for the house of my father until we came to Egypt. And in the summer I caught fish, and in the winter I kept sheep with my brethren. Zebulon not only fed his family with the fishes he caught, Zebulon had compassion towards other people. The Most High blessed the work of his hands when he went out to fish. Zebulon said for five years he fed the less fortunate with the fishes he caught. And through compassion, I shared my catch with every stranger. 
And if a man were a stranger or sick or age, I boiled the fish and dressed them well and offered them to all men as every man had need, grieving with and having compassion upon them. Wherefore also the Lord satisfied me with abundance of fish when catching fish. For he that shared with his neighbor receiveth manifold more from the Lord. For five years I caught fish, and gave thereof to every man whom I saw, and sufficed for all the house of my father. Zebulon land inheritance was close to the sea. In the Israelite nation, your name revealed your character and inheritance. Zebulon certainly lived up to Jacob, saying he would dwell at the haven of the sea. When the Israelites left Egypt to go to the promised land, a portion of Zebulon's land inheritance was near the sea. And the third lot came up for the children of Zebulun according to their families, and the border of their inheritance was unto Sarid. And their border went up toward the sea, and Maralah, and reached to Dabasheth, and reached to the river that is before Jokniam, and turned from Sarid eastward toward the sun rising unto the border of Chisloth Tabor, and then goeth out to Dabaraf, and goeth up to Japhia. And from thence passeth on along on the east to Gitah Hefer, to Itakazin, and goeth out to Ramon Methoar, to Nea, and the border compasseth it on the north side to Hanathon, and the outgoings thereof are in the valley of Jiphthael, and Katath, and Nahalal, and Shimron, and Idalah, and Bethlehem, twelve cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Zebulun according to their families, these cities with their villages. The tribe of Zebulon is one of the tribe. The scriptures give us a little account about the children of Zebulon. In the song of Deborah, Deborah said that the children of Zebulon were riders. Deborah said that Zebulon would fight until death. The tribe of Zebulon were fierce warriors. Zebulon and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. Out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people. Out of Machir came down governors, and out of Zebulun they that handle the pen of the writer. The first book of Chronicles said that the children of Zebulun were not double-minded, they were fearless. Last week in the Testament of Asher, Asher talked about the dual personality. It was revealed that his tribe did not help Deborah during the battle. Zebulun did not struggle with dual personality. You heard in the scriptures they will fight until death. The tribe of Zebulon were experts at war. Of Zebulon, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, fifty thousand, which could keep rank, they were not of double heart. In the Song of Moses, Moses said Issachar would dwell in the tents of Zebulon. Both Issachar and Zebulon share in their testaments to their children that they live a sinless life. Both Zebulon and Issachar said they are not conscious of committing any sin. It makes sense that Issachar lived in the tents of Zebulon. In the Song of Moses, he said they will call the people to the mountains. Both Issachar and Zebulon will offer sacrifices of righteousness. And of Zebulon, he said, Rejoice, Zebulon, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. They shall call the people unto the mountain. There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, but they shall suck of the abundance of the seas and of treasures hid in the sand. The Testament of Zebulon talks about the conflict between Joseph and his brothers, as well as Zebulon revealing to his children what will happen to them in the latter days. In the Testament of Zebulon, Zebulon gathered his children to him when he was 114 years old. The copy of the words of Zebulon, which he enjoined on his sons before he died in the hundred and fourteen year of his life, two years after the death of Joseph. And he said to them, Hearken to me, ye sons of Zebulon, attend to the words of your father. Zebulon said to his children that he was a gift to his parents. When he was born, his father Jacob was becoming wealthy in flocks and herds. I, Zebulon, was born a good gift to my parents. For when I was born, my father was increased very exceedingly, both in flocks and herds, when with the straight rods he had his portion. In the Testament of Zebulon, Zebulon said to his children that he is not conscious that he has sinned except in his thoughts. I am not conscious that I have sinned all my days, 
save in thought. The scriptures said in the Bible, as a man thinketh, so is he. Some people believe because they haven't committed certain sins in the flesh that they are not guilty. For example, the sin of adultery. If you never committed adultery, but in your mind and thoughts, you're lusting after other men and women outside of your marriage, you're guilty of committing adultery. The Most High told us to cast down all wicked imaginations. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When you don't cast down the wicked imaginations, you give unclean spirits and the Satans the opportunity to infest your life. The sins committed in your thoughts carry the same weight. Don't be deceived, my people. Cast down all wicked imaginations. Zebulon revealed this to be true. In the Testament of Zebulon, Zebulon said the only iniquity he is aware of is the sin of ignorance against his brother Joseph. Zebulon agreed not to tell his father about his brother's conspiracy against Joseph. Nor yet do I remember that I have done any iniquity except the sin of ignorance which I committed against Joseph. For I covenanted with my brethren not to tell my father what had been done. Participating in other people's iniquities make you a partaker with them. The Most High said to his people, Be not partakers with the lawless. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Zebulon said he cried many days in silence about Joseph. Zebulon revealed in his testaments that he feared his brothers. That is why he never told his father the truth about Joseph. They all agreed that anyone who told the secret would be killed. But I wept in secret many days on account of Joseph, for I feared my brethren, because they had all agreed that if anyone should declare the secret, he should be slain. In the testament of Zebulon, Zebulon revealed that when his brothers, mainly Simeon and Gad, wanted to kill Joseph, Zebulon revealed that Joseph pleaded for his life. Joseph said to his brothers, for the sake of their father, do not commit this great sin. Zebulon wept with Joseph. Zebulon said that when Joseph saw him weeping, he came to Zebulon for refuge by hiding behind him. But when they wished to kill him, I adjured them, much with tears, not to be guilty of this sin. For Simeon and God came against Joseph to kill him, and he said unto them with tears, Pity me, my brethren, have mercy upon the bowels of Jacob our father. Lay not upon me your hands to shed innocent blood, for I have not sinned against you. And if indeed I have sinned with chastening, chastise me, my brethren, but lay not upon me your hands for the sake of Jacob our father. And as he spoke these words, wailing as he did so, I was unable to bear his lamentations and began to weep, and my liver was poured out, and all the substance of my bowels was loosened. And I wept with Joseph, and my heart sounded, and the joints of my body trembled, and I was not able to stand. And when Joseph saw me weeping with him, and them coming against him to slay him, he fled behind me, beseeching them. Reuben said not to kill him, but to cast him into a pit. The scriptures made it clear Reuben wanted to save Joseph. The well Jacob dug that never produced water, they all agreed to put him into the well. Zebulon revealed that the reason the well never produced water, the Most High did not allow the well to produce water to save Joseph's life. But meanwhile, Reuben arose and said, Come, my brethren, let us not slay him, but let us cast him into one of these dry pits, which our fathers dig and found no water. For this cause the Lord forbade that water should rise up in them in order that Joseph should be preserved. Zebulon was left to guard the pit they placed Joseph in until Judah sold him to the Ishmaelites. Judah feared that Dan, Simeon, and Gad would come back to kill Joseph. But I, through pity for Joseph, did not eat, but watched the pit, since Judah feared, lest Simeon, Dan, and Gad should rush off and slay him. But when they saw that I did not eat, they set me to watch him, till he was sold to the Ishmaelites. By the time Reuben came back to save Joseph, he was sold. Reuben tried to find the Ishmaelites to give them back their money, but they were gone. In the Testament of Zebulon, Zebulon revealed that it was Dan that came up with the idea 
to dip Joseph's coat in blood to make it appear as if a wild animal killed him. Dan therefore came to him and said, Weep not, neither grieve, for we have found what we can say to our father Jacob. Let us slay a kid of the goats and dip in it the coat of Joseph, and let us send it to Jacob, saying, No, is this the coat of thy son? And they did so, for they stripped off from Joseph his coat when they were selling him and put upon him the garment of a slave. Simeon was angry that he didn't get a chance to kill Joseph. He refused to give his brothers Joseph's coat. Simeon wanted to rip his coat in pieces. His brothers said to him if he didn't give them the coat, they would blame him for what they did to Joseph. Now Simeon took the coat and would not give it up, for he wished to rend it with his sword, as he was angry that Joseph lived and that he had not slain him. Then we all rose up and said unto him, If thou givest not up the coat, we will say to our father that thou alone did this evil thing in Israel. And so he gave it unto them, and they did even as Dan had said. In the testament of Zebulon, Zebulon revealed that he did not take a portion in the money they took for selling Joseph. Zebulon revealed that Simeon, Gad, and six of his brothers split the money they gained for selling Joseph. Zebulon revealed that they bought sandals for themselves, wives, and children. Zebulon said they didn't buy food to eat but sandals because they wanted to see what will become of Joseph's dreams of being king over them. But Simeon and Gad and six other of our brethren took the price of Joseph and bought sandals for themselves and their wives and their children, saying, We will not eat of it, for it is the price of our brother's blood, but we will assuredly tread it underfoot, because he said that he would be king over us, and so let us see what will become of his dreams. After the sons of Jacob sold Joseph into slavery, they sat down to eat and drink. And after he was sold, my brothers sat down to eat and drink. In the testament of Zebulon, Zebulon said to his children to have compassion towards your neighbor. He said, whatever a man does for his neighbor, the most High would do to that man. This goes along with the sowing and reaping concept that God spoke about in his testaments to his children. Zebulon revealed that all of his brothers were sick on the account of Joseph. Their children became sick and some died because of what they did to Joseph. Zebulon and his children were excluded from the judgment. For all these things sake, the Lord blessed me. And when all my brethren were sick, I escaped without sickness. For the Lord knoweth the purpose of each. Have therefore compassion in your hearts, my children, because even as a man doeth to his neighbor, even so also will the Lord do to him. For the sons of my brethren were sickening and were dying on account of Joseph because they showed no mercy in their hearts, but my sons were preserved without sickness, as ye know. In the testament of Zebulon, Zebulon revealed to his children the things he did. Zebulon had compassion for his neighbor. If you're a compassionate person, the tribe of Zebulon may be your tribe. Zebulon said to his children that when he saw a man in need, he would take from his father to give to the person. Zebulon commanded his children to have compassion towards others, also to give with a pure heart. Now I will declare unto you what I did. I saw a man in distress through nakedness in winter time, and had compassion upon him, and stole away a garment secretly from my father's house, and gave it to him who was in distress. Do you, therefore, my children, from that which God bestowed upon you, show compassion and mercy without hesitation to all men, and give to every man with a good heart. Zebulon said to his children not only to have compassion, but mercy as well, so that the Most High will have mercy on you. Zebulon revealed that the Most High will send his compassion to the earth. Whoever is compassionate with mercy, the Most High will dwell in them. Have therefore yourselves also, my children, compassion towards every man with mercy, that the Lord also may have compassion and mercy upon you. Because also in the last days, God will send his compassion on the earth, and wheresoever he findeth bowels of mercy, he dwelleth in him. For in the degree in which a man hath compassion upon his neighbors, in the same degree hath the Lord also upon him. In the testament of Zebulon, Zebulon said to his children that he learned from the writings of his fathers that his children would be divided in Israel. 
Zebulon said they will follow two kings and partake in all kinds of abominations. For I have learned in the writings of my fathers that ye shall be divided in Israel, and ye shall follow two kings, and shall work every abomination. Israelites, did you notice that Zebulon said he read in the writings of his fathers? Which of the father's writings did Zebulon get the information from? If those writings were available for Zebulon to read, how come those same writings are not available for us to read? Only certain authorized scriptures is made available to the public. Every Bible have a disclaimer that states the authorized version. Where are the other writings of our fathers? How come those writings are not included in the Bible? Why did the workers of iniquity in the beast religion say not to read the other books if they truly want you to know the truth? The Testament of Zebulon reveal there are missing books. In the Testament of Dan, Dan said he read in the book of Enoch how his tribe would make Satan their prince. Also, the Danites would conspire against the Levites. For I have read in the book of Enoch the righteous that your prince is Satan and that all the spirit of wickedness and pride will conspire to attend constantly on the sons of Levi to cause them to sin before the Lord. How come the book of Enoch that is made available to us does not include the prophecies that talk about the whereabouts of the 12 tribes? Israelites, it's either you're going to believe the Most High or you don't. Do not become double-minded because you will be unstable in everything that you do. Some of the patriarchs had encounters with the angel of the Lord in the spirit realm. Levi had such encounter. While some of our fathers read in the holy writings of the fathers before them about their tribes. Israelites, are you going to believe the sons of Belial and the workers of iniquity and religion that are trying to discourage you from reading other books because some heathen haven't verified the scriptures? Who give these heathens the final authority? Are you going to believe the council of Nicaea that removed countless of scriptures from the Bible? Why don't they let you decide for yourself? The disciples of Satan who regurgitate the talking points of the heathens are trying to preserve the numerous doctrines of devils they've polluted the awakening with. Now they are trying to save face by saying women need permission. Someone asked me who gave me permission. Here is my response. And when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, by what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it, from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people. For all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Israelites, the Holy Spirit in you would tell you the truth. Don't let anyone try to scare you from reading the so-called lost books. Our fathers read from the writings of their fathers before them. Why can't we do the same and let the Holy Spirit do his job? Zebulon said that his children will be divided in Israel and they will follow two kings. I believe the two kings the tribe of Zebulon will serve are the kings the Most High selected to lead his people when he split our nation into two kingdoms. The tribe of Zebulon was a part of the northern kingdom of Israel. Rehoboam was king in Judah and Jeroboam was the king to the northern kingdom. I believe those are the two kings Zebulon is speaking of. In the Testament of Zebulon, Zebulon said that their enemies will lead them into captivity. The tribe of Zebulon will have many infirmities and tribulations. And your enemies shall lead you captive, and ye shall be evil and treated among the Gentiles with many infirmities and tribulations. The enemy that will carry them into captivity is the Assyrian army. Zebulon said that his tribe will repent and return to the Most High, and the Most High will have mercy on them. Zebulon said one will rise to his people, the light of righteousness, and he will return our people to their land. 
And after these things, ye shall remember the Lord and repent, and ye shall have mercy upon you, for he is merciful and compassionate. And after these things shall there arise unto you the Lord himself, the light of righteousness, and ye shall return unto your land. In the Testament of Zebulon, Zebulon said that his children would provoke the light of righteousness to anger again. He would cast them away until the time of consummation. And ye shall see him in Jerusalem for his name's sake. And again, through the wickedness of your works, shall ye provoke him to anger. And ye shall be cast away by him until the time of consummation. In the testament of Zebulon, Zebulon said that he will rise again as the leader to his tribe. Zebulon said he will rejoice in his tribe and in as many that kept the laws of the Most High. For I shall rise again in the midst of you as a ruler in the midst of his sons, and I shall rejoice in the midst of my tribe, as many as shall keep the law of the Lord and the commandments of Zebulon their father. After Zebulon finished commanding his children, he transitioned to the afterlife at an old age. Zebulon was buried with his fathers. In the awakening, some Israelites believe the modern-day descendants of the tribe of Zebulon are the people from Guatemala and Panama. Israelites, that is false. The modern-day people living in Guatemala and Panama are not the descendants of Zebulon. Zebulon's mother is Leah, a black woman, and Jacob, his father, a black man. Their descendants will be indigenous black people. The modern mixed people living in those nations are not Israelites. The indigenous natives to those lands are indigenous black Hamites. The various 12 tribe charts that list Hispanics and Indians, as well as the chart that lists Europeans as the descendants of the 12 tribes, are false. Israelites, don't let anyone deceive you with those charts. Let the truth of the Most High's words sanctify you. The word of the Most High is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Israelites, allow the Holy Spirit that lives in you reveal truth to you and tell you the things to come. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal the mind of the Most High. Trust the Most High with all of your heart. Don't give the Satans an opportunity to deceive you. Zebulon said to his children, he wants to see his tribe and all of the righteous in the kingdom with him and with our fathers that will awake to take the kingdom. Israelites, I want to see all of you in the kingdom. The time has come for us to humble ourselves, repent and return to serve the most high in the spirit and in truth. The only way that can happen is if you allow the most high to transform you by renewing your mind. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him.